opening in U.S. theaters, and Daniel Deadweiler is already getting a lot of uh, awards attention for her role uh, as the lead. Uh, it's the civil rights drama Till. Yes, um, this is a great time to subscribe to us because movies like Till, as Alonzo mentioned, are getting lots of awards coverage. Uh, we'll have everything you're going to need all throughout awards season because Alonzo's favorite time of year is award season. <laughs> so uh, come make sure you hang out with us. We'd love if you would subscribe and join us. We're still aiming for 20,000, so come on along. Are you listening? Yes. Be small down there. Like this? We're talking about Till. This is about the lynching of young 14-year-old Emmett Till in Mississippi in the summer of 1955. Um, we know this story. And so Tanoi Chuku, who wrote it and directed it, tried to find a different way into it. And that is through the perspective of this boy's mother, played by Daniela Deadweiler. And so you, you see very efficiently in the beginning what kind of a warm and loving and playful mother-son relationship they have. She'll hold a shot for a long time. If you saw Clemency, which was great, um, she will make the most of just like lingering in a moment and letting us get a sense of relationships and emotion and personality just, just by watching, by observing. And so you see Mamie and Emmett just in the car, just singing along to a song on the radio. And we get so much just from that very first little scene there. And she'll continue that the whole way through. So Emmett is a, a, a bright and funny and kind of impish little kid, little kid, he's a teenager. And he goes down to Mississippi to go spend the summer with his relatives down there. And she warns him like, look, it's different from Chicago. You know how to be here, but you don't know how to be there. And just be careful of how you are around white people and how you behave and how you talk to them. Everything is yes, sir. And no, ma'am. And, and he says he understands this, but uh, one day at the convenience store where they all hang out after picking cotton at the, the sharecropper's field, the depiction here is that he pays a compliment to the white woman behind the counter, played by Haley Bennett, and then he whistles at her in an appreciative way. And that was the end of that for him. Um, we see him being pulled from the house, but Tanoe Chuku shows some great restraint in yes. these moments in not showing it to us. It's fascinating what she chooses to show and what she chooses to hold back on. Because while we don't see the actual killing, she lingers in the sight of this young man's body, which is what Mamie Till wanted. She wanted the world to see. This is what sure. happened to my boy. The world needs to see this. And Chinoe Chuku honors that by doing the same. But I'm of two minds as to how I feel about how long she does that. And is it too much? And who am I to say? I, f I feel a lot of conflicted feelings about this. Yeah, I mean, I saw a trailer for this that was attached to The Woman King. It was, was a different trailer than I had seen previously. Mm -hmm. And this one seemed very much aimed at black audiences. And, mm -hmm. you know, she was talking, the director, and, and you know, Whoopi Goldberg was in the film and right. is one of the producers. And the message was like, look, this is not going to be a movie that, like, lingers over violence on black bodies. Uh, this is going to be a movie that, that begins and ends with black joy. And this is going to be a movie that addresses history, but doesn't like, you know, shove your face into the act of violence. It does shove your face in the results of violence, yes. which I think is different. I think it's, it's different because nobody is enjoying seeing his bloated, you know, a, a corpse. So I think this movie is very wisely treating the, the violent act at a distance. You hear some of it, you, you kind of see the lights coming out of the barn, but she wants to dwell on the after effects. And again, right. you're right. It does tie into Mamie Till's strategy, right. which was everybody's going to see this. Right. And it was a pivotal moment in the civil rights fight. And so it's, you know, it's totally relevant to show all that. Um, but just FYI, as you're going into this, it is very, very difficult to watch. And like I sat there as a mother of, of, a, of a child who was about that age, like sure. tears streaming down my face and my jaw dropped open. Like it's really, really, really hard to watch. So yeah, it's effective no. in that regard, you know? Absolutely. I, I if, if there's anything that I like, uh, there's a lot that I love about this movie, starting with Danielle Deadweiler, who gives an extraordinary performance totally. as, as Mamie Till. Like totally. she holds a close up like nobody's business and talk about long sequences. Like yep. when she's on the witness stand, yep. when this thing finally goes to trial, it, it's a, is, it, is it one take? It is, is one it? take. And yeah, you hear her being interrogated, yeah. or, you know, questioned on the stand and you see everything flash across her face and you see her thinking. You see yes. her thinking about what she 
wants to say and then deciding what she should say. What she can say, say yeah, in right. this context. Exactly. So mm-hmm. she's extraordinary. Jalen she Hall is. as young Emmett is great. So good. Um, I, I was reminded of, this is a weird connection maybe, but uh, Chris O'Donnell in Fried Green Tomatoes, who plays a <laughs> character who dies very quickly, mm-hmm. but who has to be but his death has to be important to other characters. And so he has to just immediately give you all of this like charisma and just charm. And you really want to, you have to fall in love with this character in like 45 seconds. Right. So that when they die, it means something. Jalen Hall playing Emmett Till has a handful of scenes, but you love this kid. Right. You, you are, you think he's so great. And so it just adds to the overall tragedy of this thing and how. He was raised by a woman who had gotten out of the South and didn't want to raise him in fear and wanted to allow him to have a childhood. And yet he goes to the South and, you know, this this terrible thing happens. Um, if there's a thing I want to point out that I think this movie could have done better is what makes this story unique is Mamie Till very shrewdly saying there's going to be an open casket. There are going to the press is going to take pictures. People are going to see what they did to my boy. And that is what changed. I mean, it didn't single handed, but it was a huge turning point in the civil rights moment where lynching went from being this thing that you would sort of read about to like looking at what this is what it looks like. This is the kind of violence being delivered upon, you know, human bodies in the South. And I think the movie could have dealt more with the media aspect of it all, like how that message got out to people. Because we basically see people say to her that it was an important thing or that they were moved by it. But these are people, generally all black people are saying this to her. So if we had seen how did this message trickle outward you know one montage of like how did how is this different to your average white newspaper Uh reader or television watcher than every other episode of brutality that occurred during the civil rights moment i think that's what's missing from this movie because that's what the till story is but what's here is Uh terrific for the most part she avoids a lot of uplifting tropes in the kinds of films like this, where it is telling you know, a true historical story of change, you know, at, until like the end, there's a speech where maybe Till has come into her own as yeah. a civil rights leader. She's speaking in Harlem and there's like a, a cutaway to like rapturous crowds cheering and nodding. And it just, it feels like an unnecessary bit of handholding for a film that all along the way, had taken a different kind of perspective and a different kind of tone and had avoided that kind of simple uplift. Like, I don't think yeah. we need to see that. But every other step of the way, like the way the humanity of Mamie Till and the evolution of her character from being this really like sophisticated and polite woman who tries to keep her rage in check and ultimately cannot. And the, just the explosion, the understandable explosion of rage and sorrow, she gets to really show a lot here. And just from a, from a production and costume design perspective, oh. like every, she has so many cute purses. <laughs> she has so many cute little handbags and like just the texture on all her dresses and like so many great wallpaper designs. Like they really take a lot of care to, bring us into her world, into her home and show us like the care that she took with everything that she did, including raising her son. Did you notice how everybody, all the, the, the people in the black community who don't know her always call her Mrs. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And the white the people just call, her, call her Mamie. Right. Like, because they, they think, think they she's can. beneath them and not worthy of that kind of respect. Yes. Mamie, yeah. you sit over here. Exactly. Absolutely. Anyway, um, a tremendous performance from Daniel Deadweiler, though, yes. who was also so good in The Harder They Fall last year. Mm, so I'm yes. saying 8.4. I said eight. Yeah, yeah, I think this is really solidly put yeah. together. And, uh, you know, if you don't know the Emmett Till story, this is, uh, I think, essential. 